The first perspective in psychology is the psychodynamic perspective. Developed by Sigmund Freud, the psychodynamic perspective explores the influence of the unconscious mind on behavior. This approach believes that childhood experiences and unresolved inner conflicts play a crucial role in shaping an individual's personality and behavior. Psychodynamic theorists often explore dream meanings and, during therapy, aim to uncover suppressed thoughts and memories. Freud believed we suppress memories from our past as a defense mechanism because they are too traumatic to deal with. Next, we have the behavioral perspective. This approach was highly critical of the psychodynamic approach because it thought real psychological science should care only about visible behaviors, not inner thoughts. So, behaviorists focus on the influence of the environment on observable behaviors. Pioneered by B.F. Skinner and John Watson, behaviorists believe that all behaviors are learned through a process called conditioning. This perspective often utilizes reinforcement and punishment to modify a patient's behaviors. The third perspective is the cognitive approach. This approach disagreed with behaviorism, believing that we can, in fact, explore unobservable thought processes. The cognitive approach centers on how people think, perceive, remember, and learn. Cognitive psychologists study processes like problem-solving, decision-making, and language comprehension. They believe that understanding these mental processes can provide insights into human behavior. So, cognitive theorists are highly concerned with how the human brain works. Next, we have the socio-cultural perspective. This viewpoint emphasizes the role of social and cultural influences on human behavior. It considers how societal norms, values, and traditions shape individual behaviors and thoughts. This perspective also explores how behaviors vary across cultures and the impact of cultural evolution on the mind. For example, the socio-cultural perspective would be open to the idea that different people have different thought processes based upon the cultural norms and traditions in which they were raised. Fifth, we have the biological perspective. This viewpoint explores the links between the brain, nervous system, and behavior. It seeks to understand how genetics, hormones, and neurotransmitters influence emotions, thoughts, and actions. This perspective often collaborates with neuroscientists and employs tools like brain scans to study the brain's structure and function. Sixth, we have the evolutionary perspective. This approach focuses on how evolutionary principles, such as natural selection, have shaped human behavior over time. Evolutionary psychologists believe that certain behaviors have been hardwired into our DNA because they offered ancestral advantages in survival and reproduction. This perspective sheds light on topics like mating preferences, aggression, and altruism. Lastly, we have the humanistic perspective. Rooted in the works of Carl Rogers and Abraham Maslow, this approach emphasizes personal growth, free will, and human potential. Humanistic psychologists believe that individuals are innately good and motivated to achieve self-actualization. Self-actualization is the term that Abraham Maslow used to explain the optimal state of humanity. To reach self-actualization, you need to have a range of base needs met, such as comfort, food, shelter, safety, a sense of belonging, and strong self-esteem. To understand Maslow's perspective, I recommend watching this video next on Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs.